Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to begin a discussion on sequences. In particular, we're going to be looking at explicit sequences. So let's go ahead and have some fun here. So when we're talking about an explicit sequence, what we are talking about is kind of something like this. I'm going to start by giving you an example. So let's say we have basically, I guess you could say two variables. That's one way to think about it. And we're looking at like the growth of like a bacteria or something over, you know, several days. So on day one, it's a two, two bacteria are there. Uh, and then on day two, you got four. And then on day three, you got eight. And on day four, you got 16. You're probably already starting to figure out the pattern here. And so we want to, of course, continue this over here. So dot, 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 dot. These are ellipses. Um, ellipses means that this goes on forever. And so we want to figure out well, what is it going to be if we wanted to know on like the 14th day. That's kind of our question here. Day 14th, the 14th day, what is it going to be? And so we need to first talk about what a sequence is. A sequence is a function whose domain, that means the values inside it, is a subset of the counting number. So, you know, we got lots of counting numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And a sequence is a subset of whatever of all the possible counting numbers. So you can see here that my subset would include the following. So 2, 4, 6, 8, oh wait, not 2, 4, whoa, 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 whoa. 2, 4, 8, and then of course 16 would be further down there, excuse me. And so that is the subset of the growth variable, if you will. We're not using every number. We're using specific numbers of the county numbers to figure this out. Now, we need to try to, we know we got a sequence here. We're using a certain subset of the numbers and we need to try to figure out, hmm, you know, what, what could this pattern be? Let's see here, what could it be? So if I had to actually make the subset, I, I kind of did this on the previous slide, but I just want to make it nice and clear. So this is our growth subset. It'll be two and then four, and then eight, and then 16. And then if we kept going, it would go to 32, and you know, dot, 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 forever, forever. It's an infinite sequence, it never ends. Um, so, let's see here. Okay, well, if I just kind of look at the picture here and use some of my int intuition here, I'm starting to see the following pattern. So, all these numbers here are have a base of two. So if I can figure out what the exponent is, which is probably clear if you're familiar with a little bit about math, you can see that to get two, if I have a base of two to get two, it would be two to the first power. Continuing that, if I continue with the base two to get four, I would have two to the second power. And then of course, if I keep a base of two, if I raise it to the third power, I'll get two to the eight, or excuse me, eight, excuse me. And then if I have a base of two to get to 16, I would go two to the fourth power. And then if I had a base of two and I want 32, I go two to the fifth power. So this is the pattern. What's happening is that we are keeping the same base of two and we are increasing the um, exponent by one each time, one, one, one. Okay, because we're doing an explicit sequence here. We'll talk about recursive later. And so if I wanted to find out, if I go off into infinity or if I go off forever and ever, it's gonna be two, two, n. That's how it's going to be. <clears throat> now I see the pattern here, and now I need to figure out what is my formula going to be. And this is going to take a little bit of thought here, to try not to get lost. And so if I wanted to do this, and I'm making an explicit formula, explicit formula, that's what I'm making, it'll be as follows. A, which is the, the term of my sequence, A to the subset N, is going to equal two to the N. So let's work with that and see what we get if we actually work this out. So if I have A, which is again the term of my sequence, so this is basically A1 right here. This is A2, A subset 2, A subset 3, A subset 4. So now watch this. A subset 1 is going to be the same as 2 to the first power, which is going to equal 2. A subset 2 is going to be the same as 2 to the second power, which is going to equal 4. A subset 3 is going to be the same as 2 to the third power, which is going to equal 8. And then A subset 4 is going to equal the same as 2 to the fourth power, is going to equal 16. And then A subset 5 is going to equal the same as 2 to the fifth power, is going to equal 32. 
And so this is our explicit formula here. Now, again, explicit because we're stating it directly. Let me see here if I can try to explain to you what explicit means. Uh, explicit because what we're trying to do here is, um, okay, it's a closed formula. That's why it's called explicit, excuse me. So it's an explicit formula because we're trying to, it's a closed formula. It doesn't repeat, it doesn't, you know, take prior values to determine the future value. Now, let me see if I can explain something else to you. So now, let's say, remember our original goal was to figure out what was going to happen on the 14th day. That was our original goal in case you remember. So, A subset 14 is going to equal 2 to the 14th power. And if we solve that one, 2 to the 14th power is uh, going to equal 16384, if you can read that. And so that means on the 14th day, we will have 16,384 sales, if you will, if that's how you want to think about it. Now, one last thing before we go is we want to talk about an infinite versus a finite series. So an infinite series, it has basically some numbers inside it, and then it, it closes out with an ellipsis. This is infinite. It goes on forever, infinite. A finite will have a terminal number, if you will. So if I want to do a finite, it would be 2, 4, and then we would go 8, 16, then we got our dots, and then we would have a final number, like 1,000, ooh, excuse me, 1,024, like that. And so that'll close it out. So these are kind of the two, two types of uh, sequence, or, yeah, sequences, series, excuse me, series, no, sequences, I meant sequences. Um, you have the infinite and you have the finite. And then you also have where you have ex explicit and recursive. Recursive means you're kind of building on the prior ones. This will make more sense in future videos. And uh, explicit means that you just, it's a closed formula. You, there, there's nothing building on top of it. So let me kind of wrap up what we talked about and conclude this video. So in this video today, we talked a little bit about sequences. In particular, we talked about explicit sequences. So a sequence is when it's a subset of the counting numbers. And you want to try to make an equation from that subset to try to explain the behavior of it, if you will. And so we started with this pattern right here, 2, 4, 8, 6. We have days on the top. Maybe, I guess you could say it's the X values. And then Y is the growth, you know, how much the sales multiplied. And so we figured out that, hey, you know, the base is 2 and the exponent is increasing by 1 each time. And so that led to this little pattern over here, right here. A sub n, or A stands for the term of the sequence. A sub n is equal to 2 to the raise to the, to the nth power. And so after that, we worked it out here, like so, and we we're able to solve it. And so once you know the actual equation for the sequence, if you are the formula, if you will, probably, probably better use the term formula, you can now plug in any number you want and get the answer for any value that you want. And so we took our knowledge here to get the answer right here for our friend here. We wanted to know how many cells will we have on the 14th day, and we got the answer after we were able to calculate the formula. And so also to wrap things up, you know that there's an infinite sequence and also a finite sequence. And so infinite means it goes on forever, finite means it has a stop point, as you can see right here in these two examples right here. So I hope that this video was useful for you and you were able to understand what we were talking about. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Take care.